Uh, my name is Carlos Venegas, and I'm a Season 9 Autonomy graduate. It's been uh, just over a year since since I graduated, and uh, what a journey it's been. Um, and I'm super excited to be uh, interviewing uh, Renee Devereaux. I, I, I've seen her around the forum uh, many a times, and I've learned so much from her. So it's such an honor and pleasure to get to know her on a, on a more personal level. So uh, with, without further ado, Renee, would you like to say something about yourself? Um, here, let me, let, let's get started with this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what was your dream before joining Autonomy? And, uh, and since joining Autonomy, where are you at with that dream? Carlos, I want to thank you so much for doing this with me. I'm really thrilled. I appreciate your time and I've seen you around also. We had never really talked and now you're asking me questions. Okay. And my dream, you know, my dream has always been to manifest what is what the creativity within me. And I've been self-employed for 40 <laughs> plus years. And I was at the point of, well, I relocated and it was been it's been difficult for me I'm from Cal I spent a lot of time in California I moved to Nevada it's been challenging and I was at the point of trying to decide what am I going to do because things are not really flowing for me here in Nevada as they had in the past and so then autonomy showed up <laughs> and I don't really know how how I made the connection, but I was presented with a, you know, with a, a brief course and it looked, you know, it was appealing. It was right up my alley and I did it. Nothing really came of it. And then again, it showed up in my email list. I was invited to a, I think it was a quest. And so I began to think, well, maybe there is something further that I can do. I don't want to retire. That was never in the plan. And what do I do now? Because I have been working so much and there's much that I can contribute, especially about entrepreneurship. And here's autonomy. That seems to be the specialty here. And it seemed like, wow, am I going to... Um, Am I going to participate? Is it not too late? Is it, you know, what's what are the ramifications of participating? So that's that was my initiation or my initial introduction to autonomy. And the dream was always to be able to have a platform on which I could continue to expand and grow. Right. You know, and... um I know you're a very accomplished, uh, and, and uh, correct me if I get this wrong. Um, you're an author. Um, you you did a. a oh, I don't, I don't want to get it wrong. So can you kind of can you give us a quick overview of some of your experience and um, some areas where you, you saw autonomy as a, a as something to supplement um, your goals. Well, thank you. I, yes, I am an author. I've written two books. Uh, the first one was The Ultimate Love Affair. And now the second one, which I was working with or on when I met Autonomy. And that is Freedom on Empo and Empowerment Through Entrepreneurship, which is really my, like, that's my my baby. Because I have something to say about this in this area. And here, autonomy, it was in alignment with my philosophy about principle, because I'm a strong adherent of principle and natural law and so forth. And here, like, oh, gosh, autonomy, that seems like right up my alley. I think I need to investigate further. So that's been my, the pleasure that I've had in uh, becoming acquainted with autonomy. You know, and uh, with that said, I do want to play a quick clip uh, just to kind of frame your journey and that way people can kind of get a, a, a understanding. So 
I think that's a good little segue here. Let's let's go ahead and and do that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and. Did anyone else uh, have thoughts they wanted to share on that or how making your offer to the public is really the that's, game changer? That's me. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thank you. Now batting, Renee. Okay, so that's where I'm. I'm working on that skill because it's one that I've always lacked. I've never had to sell my work. I've never had to sell anything. It's been, um, you know, what? Let's just say it's been a life of a career of referrals. I've made presentations live. I've been the, well, I, my best. I achieved my best as a therapist and as a contributor to people's growth. And it's all, it was always word of mouth. I've never sold my product. I drew the people who were attracted to it. It's not, my work is not for everyone. And then I've relocated a lot. So starting from scratch was never an issue. So again, my gratitude for discovering autonomy because the, well, the main thing that I'm grateful for is the community. I am very social and very outgoing, believe it or not, even though I've lived in so much of my life in solitude because I needed to do that. I've studied endlessly. I needed to what, get innumerable certifications to be able to do what I do, the quality of work that I've achieved, you know, I'm proud of. So selling or uh, making an offer is just has not been easy for me. So being able to have my, my seminar, I didn't have that many attendees, yet I did have quality people show up. They were there uh, just about every session. It was six sessions. I didn't charge anything because essentially this is what I do. I present my work. You're either going to be attracted to it and you want to take a deeper dive, either one-on-one -on -one, or they'll be willing to participate in the webinar that I've been working with, with autonomy. And, um, but I do thank you and Leah, especially, no, no, not especially both of you greatly from my heart uh, for being, let's say, for being able to gather or to present my work, you know, to those who are willing to listen. Uh, well, first we had to figure out how to get you in the course. Remember, remember well, when you yeah. thought you might not need this course? Remember when we talked to you? Well, because the book, <laughs> My book, The Freedom, it's been ready. I finished it in February. So I just needed a platform. I needed to be able to get it online uh, to be able to do the webinars. And this is where, okay. And then for me, the bonus has been the, the community, the mm -hmm. community where everyone is heard that I love that. Because again, my life has been one of solitude. The community with autonomy has been uh, a godsend, a real godsend, because I've communicated with so many. I've joined different groups, the book club, um, you know, all different, and the movies, <laughs> and the movies. So that's been a lot of fun. And it's um it's an opportunity for me to uh, to socialize. So I'm really grateful. So I wanted to say that. Thank you. You are most welcome. And uh, I think a lot of people feel the same way. I, I feel the same way. I draw value from the community of camaraderie and support and insight and ideas and inspiration. And it really became a thing around COVID. That's when we saw the power of the community. Hey, the smart people don't know what's going on. We better start thinking for ourselves. What is, what is this thing? How do we beat it? What do we do? How do we get it to each other? All those great things started popping off. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's about us learning to take care of ourselves and then take care of each other. 
and not by doing the work of others, but by giving people the resources so they can take care of themselves. And that it's worldwide. That is just so phenomenal. You see, I mean, and this is why I always ask, where are you? You know, <laughs> where is your sandbox? Because it's so exciting to me. I mean, here is Shameless. I've had a conversation with him. He's on Taiwan now in Vancouver. You know, it's like, wow, how fabulous. Yeah, we've had students. Of, there's a student this year uh, you know, from Sri Lanka. We've mm -hmm. had students from Malaysia. I've had to look up places on the map sometimes. Someone will be in an oil field in like Baku. They're like, I listen and I got, you know, I got the autonomy thing and I want to, I'll just do it remotely and listen to the replays because they don't have any internet. But like people are figuring out for themselves, like how to get access to it and how to internalize it and stop making <laughs> excuses. Cause it's like, you know, you might be busy, but I bet if we looked at your calendar, there's 20 minutes to work or 20 minutes home or someplace where you can start chipping away at these problems by getting educated. Well, see, the thing is that there are a lot of people around like me where there's no one around to have a conversation, a meaningful conversation, you know, of the conditions or whatever is going on now, and to have a mutual ground, a common ground where we can discuss freely who we are, what we are, what we love. I mean, ah, thank you. Bless you. Well, I also want to recognize uh, your participation in the town hall at Grand Theft World because you know, between you being there and Beck being there and Beck has the interview, you know, experience from going through autonomy and you were able to share a lot of heavy duty life experiences with people who had only heard about these things as rumor. Like you mm -hmm. helped them see reality through that whole conversation. And, you know, for a lot of people, I think that's one part of why Beck was curious. Cause he's like, this is like, it's, it's something you hear about, but you're not sure. And then you meet someone who has your experiences and then they can see clearly this is how countries run. This is how towns run. This is how like authority runs. It's a long standing thing in our society. And it's not something that just popped up because of Jeffrey Epstein. It's, it's like, yeah. A, yeah. And I was, I was so grateful to have that opportunity, Richard, because my intention has been to have people awaken to what really goes on in this world on such a level that yes, the traumas, the, the way people suffer emotionally is unbelievable. This, the situations, not only personally, but what I have experienced through other clients, through clients is unbelievable. And yes, I've cried buckets and not just for myself, but because of what is available in the human condition. So to transform, yes, it is a matter of learning what does go on with these people to learn to suspect that just because they're in this position or they're so-called, you know, they qualify as this group, it doesn't make them holy. As a matter of fact, there's a real, you know, like a real cloud over particular sex particular groups and i want to make people aware of that veritas all right renee thank you uh what a great clip i do remember that it was uh not too long ago i i believe uh that that conversation took place so Renee, since um, since now you know since joining Autonomy, uh, and I know you you dropped some um, some nuggets there in in that clip, but what's been the biggest surprise for you uh, since joining Autonomy? The biggest surprise, finding so many people who have a a, a common ground. It's like here. I don't have to be careful as to who I, or what I talk about, you see, because here everybody's informed as to what is the real story in our world and the new world order and so on and so forth. And um, I can, I, we can speak freely and that to me is wonderful. So that was, yeah, probably the biggest pleasant surprise. 
Uh, that was just one though. <laughs> the next one was uh, being able to offer a course at the Ultimate Love Affair. I really wanted to do that because that was my first book. And I've been wanting to have people know who I am, what I do, that I'm, you know, I've been around a long time and I've learned a few things and it's always the bottom line, learning to love yourself, the ultimate love affair. That is what it's all about. And I, I offered this free course. People showed up and I was, that was, that was a delightful surprise because they didn't know me, but yet they were open. So in general, that would be the number one surprise that people are open to have the conversations and to be willing to attend a, you know, a seminar by someone they're not really familiar with, but they're willing to trust. That's a beautiful surprise. <laughs> And uh, Renee, I know you you also had um, an opportunity to work with Richard. Um, obviously, we saw a little bit of that in that clip. Can you uh, talk to us a little bit about how that experience was? Oh, well, it, it, it was wonderful. It was really supportive because I feel there's a need to share the story. Uh, a lot of, and I realize for a lot of people, it's very hard to digest, very hard to accept. And uh, between Richard and Beck, they brought it forward, or I was allowed to express and to speak without being fearful or being nervous. So uh, it was handled very graciously. I appreciate that. And Renee, did you have any obstacles um, in joining autonomy? Well, only in my mind. I wasn't sure that it would provide the the tools that I needed to complete my my webinar. I had the webinar in mind when I joined, and I'm not, and I have no desire in becoming technologically adept. You know, the, the computer or that, you know what you're doing with all these buttons and whatever, that presents a real challenge to me, <laughs> being a co-host and so on and so forth. It's like, ah. <laughs> and I'm grateful that it's available. And that mm -hmm. if I wanted to learn the ropes, someone, or, or I would be able to learn those skills. So I think it's um, you know phenomenal that all of this is available. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, I remember my first time. I'm not a very techie person myself, <laughs> so um, I've I've had to learn a lot, and it's been great. I um, it's it's been uh, one of the my biggest joys in autonomy is uh, learning all the tech stuff because it like frees you up. It mm -hmm. it uh, frees up more time for you. Like you become more efficient at things. Exactly, um, but it is an investment in time in the moment, and it's like oh, <laughs> yeah. So um, I do want to open it up. D does anyone here have a question for Renee um, that they would like to ask her? I was just curious as to what have you found to be the most beneficial aspects of the community forum in the course of autonomy uh, as you guys progressed along? The and probably the generosity of people. You see, there's a generosity uh, where we or everybody seems to recognize each other, and there's a, a respect, an undercurrent of respect that I so appreciate. Was that the the question? Am I addressing? Yes, that's that's definitely what I'm trying to find out is it's just kind of the general milieu that you're a part of in the forum. Obviously, that's kind of part that you will not experience until you're in it. And so I'm trying to get in a feel of, of what that was like for yourself and for any of the other graduates that are coming out of the program. You know, that's that's really a, a real sense of the generosity that people are there. We're all in the same boat wanting to expand in many ways. 
and we're all learning and there's something to learn from each other, but there's a spirit, there's a, a quality overall that I find very attractive, very appealing. And that's why I, I'm, I'm grateful. It's the, yeah, that spirit of generosity and understanding that nobody's going to be uh, making fun <laughs> or disrespecting anybody else that we give each other the space to speak. And I, Thank I can you add, so much. I, I, uh, yeah, it's, it's so, let's see, I'm in, in thinking about that question, there's so much that comes. Um, for me, it's, it's really been, um, like I found uh, people who I just, it's like a connection that mm -hmm. is very rare. Um, and meeting meet, meeting a lot of these people in, in real life has been, um, uh, it, it's even hard to explain. It's like, a, how can I say this? When it's like, almost like you, 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 you meet your family that you've, like your your brother from another mother, your 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 sister from another mother. You know, like I I got to I've uh, it's been my my second year. I've been uh, going to Porcupine Festival, and I also went to an art Puko and the the autonomy community is is it, it is worldwide. So I've had the opportunity to interact with people mm -hmm. down in Acapulco when I've gone there, uh, up in New Hampshire. I connected with Richard this a uh, few months ago. Uh, for, for this last porcupine festival and um that bond that learning um i learn i always learn a lot and um mm. it's 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 just beautiful man it's kind of hard to put into words so no no i, but I, I, I did want to add that yeah no i understand totally because i haven't met anyone yet in person and i so look forward to it because i know it will be an instant connection where there will be hugs it's not a handshake it's a it, I, mean, I you know i instinctively know that we'll be hugging you know when i meet anybody from autonomy it's it's that sort of uh connection that was a great question Nathan. A any other questions yeah uh renee how did yeah. you find the um pacing and the you know was it late night for you the lectures on Fridays like how'd you find the pacing of the lectures and what what can you tell us about your experience uh attending the lectures oh well I love the lectures because there's always uh, you know everything always resonated with me it was just my core philosophy everything there was really nothing new and it just reaffirmed what's in my soul you see it's like what I've known instinctively for so many years and here I'm hearing it on a weekly basis I was like oh my gosh I can't get enough <laughs> so that that's my uh, uh yeah the, how I received the the lectures it was always excellent um yeah, no. It... I have a question for you. So, uh, how did you get overwhelmed uh, your first season going around, or how no. how did you? How was your experience going through the uh, the, the the three months this your yeah. season? No, everything was just um, you know so welcome. Like you say, everything resonated with material that I had heard, learned, experienced. And here it was just a recollection, a reaffirming validation. It's like, oh my gosh, everything I've learned, here it is again, being presented in a very concise, beautiful way. And I get to hear this every week. It's like, yes. <laughs> so, did you have it? Did you have any concerns in regards to like uh maybe like when the lecture was, like the the times and the replays, like well, it was very fortunate for me because the the meeting started at six o'clock Pacific time. So for me, it was perfect. And usually, I, you know, they were long until from six to 10 Pacific time. And sometimes they'd go past a little bit, but uh, I hung in there. And sometimes it was like, okay, I need to, <laughs> to close down at 1030 or whatever. 
but essentially, no, it was not overwhelming. It was just so good to, for me to be hearing. It's like, you know, again, the validation of what you already know, what you know, the truth of something. And here is somebody speaking it with wisdom and grace, delivering. It's like, yes, yes, this is why I'm here. And, uh, you know, there were clips of people, uh, you know, sh sharing their experiences. So it was all, it was all, you know, wonderful and welcome for me. Yeah. Awesome. That's great to hear. Um, so I Renee, have another, oh, I have go ahead. Question. I have a follow-up. Uh, so what was it like for you during the Q&As and how long did it take you to finally hit the unmute button and speak up and ask questions? You know, I had no problem with with uh, unmuting that button from the very start. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to apply um, guess I either had a question or a comment or wanted uh, something, you know, to contribute to what was going on. It just seemed that a lot of people were asking questions. And um, I, again, because I've been around such a long time and been self-employed and so forth, I, I just felt like I could contribute. So it, it took no time at all for me to unmute. And what were some of the benefits that you got when you unmuted? Well, I love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love to talk. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, just an open space where I could convey a belief or a, a tradition or something that had helped me in my in my growth of my business and and so forth. And, you know, so it, it's all been very rewarding for me to meet so many people who are were open, receptive and so forth. Yeah. So R Renee, you mentioned earlier that um you were working, you, you had uh, the book that you were working on and you had the intention of a webinar in mm -hmm. mind. Uh, since joining Autonomy, has there been other directions that, you know, given what you've uh, listened to or heard that you take that you've added to maybe more than just the webinar? You mentioned the course. Uh... Right. Well, I'm still working on the webinar. That is coming together because I do want to be able to present it. What uh, I did offer the six week free course, well, Leah, you know, I mean, the community is so wonderful. She's going to be able to um, edit those six classes and then offer them to the community on Agora or, or something. Again, beyond my, <laughs> my understanding, but <laughs> she's going to do that. And so, uh, it's like, how, how beautiful is that you know, right. to be able to offer something that's been from coming from my heart because my work and my heart are locked. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I've I think always... you just clarify, we're going to put that course onto the Agora marketplace and it's going to be a worldwide offering that will go out there to the public and you've converted taking what you know and your skills and created a course within autonomy to present your offer to the world. So you've crossed that bridge and, and breached that paradigm. So congratulations, amazing job. Well, thank you. And you see, <laughs> Carlos, it's like the gifts, uh, the generosity and the way things have fallen together. To me, it's miraculous. And like I say, I, I can get very emotional. I can cry because not from pain anymore, but from the joy when I see the the generous, uh, loving nature that is here fundamentally with autonomy, I you know it's like I'm awestruck. I really am, and I yeah, and it is easy for me to cry <laughs> anytime, anytime now. <laughs> Yeah. So is, is there any other tough questions for Renee that anyone has? <laughs> I have a question. So could you sort of speak, and I, I think we just got a, an example of it, 
um, when Leah spoke up, but could you speak uh, sort of in concrete terms about some specific things that you got from autonomy, autonomy when you brought what, what you brought and how that was made into the things that you got through autonomy and, and how that um, moved you further along your path? Well, thank you for asking that. And I am going to cry <laughs> because what I found most amazing was that um, my my intention, my heart was identified, you know, Leah and Richard and, you know, some of the people I have connected with, they knew, they known instantly where I'm coming from. Yes, I've been self-employed of all these years and I really love my work. There is no question about it. There's hardly anything else in my life that I that is as important to me as my work and the uh, ability or the gifts that I've been able to bring forward where I can help people transform. And uh, it's a combination of therapy. It's something I have put together that works and does help people. And I know that Leah read my my heart and my intention. Consequently, the generosity has been phenomenal. The support in bringing it all into fruition is beyond my expectation, definitely. So yes, I do get emotional because it's been a one woman show. It's been a one woman career and I've had very little support. So to see people come forward and understand where I'm coming from and offer me that net that I've never had, <laughs> you know, is extraordinary. It's extraordinary for me, yeah. I, now, I do want to call on some of the graduates. Um, <clears throat> given uh, that you guys already went through autonomy, do you guys have any questions for Renee, who just uh, graduated from autonomy? I do have one. I, I do have uh, another another thing to bring up. Um, Renee, you mentioned your course. That's wonderful. Um, and I'm aware that you were in the pro media uh, mm -hmm. course as well as the regular autonomy course. Let's talk about pro media for a second and and how that uh separate course from the core autonomy course pro media how how did that help you like um oh. what sort of things were you getting into in that course as well well it's phenomenal really because again the support that i had there I, uh, leah took my ideas or my, the, essentially the book and the modules mm -hmm. and she did <laughs> the magical stuff you know with the, with the computer and <laughs> you know the kajabi and the oh my gosh the google uh, drive and so forth which is really foreign to me and challenging right. yet she helped me maneuver and get uh, a, a limited amount of skill Right. I'm not. Uh, and I really don't accept myself to stretch to that degree where I'm going to be as adept as any of you, because I know that uh, any of you are far, far more of a, advanced than I. But yet she was able to put together the modules. And so that now I can hire somebody locally here who can work with what we had developed and solidify it so that I will be able to have that course uh, maybe uh, hopefully before the end of the year definitely so so pro media helped you take your concept and actually like bring it to the market and like complete just completely bridge that gap that's the intention that she showed me how it can be done how it is done because again I wasn't the only one who has a project and I could see what is available, you know, with, um, oh my gosh, the, the different resources that are available to everyone and that I have, like I say, limitation maneuvering, but I know it's there, it's available. 
if I persisted. So, so <clears throat> King, um, I'm gonna, I, I would like to ask you to add a little bit more to that. Like, how how did like um, how did it come together? That that how did the pro media really uh, uh, like what did you learn there that that put that course together for you? Like, is there any additional things that that came about that you weren't aware of, maybe? Oh, absolutely. For example, the ability of my speech, you know, my saying what I needed to say or whatever, and that it would be transcribed and mm -hmm. a script would be created at the same time. It's like, oh my gosh, how how fabulous is that? I didn't know that there was that capability available. And so here we, we went through several modules, or all of them actually, and I'm speaking and the... <laughs> You know, it's like the robot is transcribing or, you know, so that uh, to me was pretty magical. So, R Renee, you mentioned you participated in uh, the ProMedia uh, course. Is there any other extracurricular activities that you participated in uh, during your, your first season in autonomy? Well, uh, let's see. Well, we started with uh, the book club, which I really appreciated because I love I love books. And then, of course, Doc and his and him and the movies that he presented because uh, everybody needs to be entertained, and as well as I do periodically. <laughs> and uh, oh, of course, we did the what was that? The one on one? No, not one on one. The master class, the master groups. Oh, the mastermind groups. Yes, the mastermind groups. Yes, and that was great because then I got to meet. Uh, a couple of other people who were working on their projects. And that was also very illuminating because I can see, again, the common, the commonality of the people in autonomy, wanting to create something beautiful, wanting to contribute to the world. And this is such an opportune time to be doing that. Uh, Renee, can you... Uh, tell us a little bit more about the mastermind, maybe for, for some of us who might not be aware of what that is. Uh, yeah. In your own words, like, can you kind of yeah, elaborate regular, on that? Yeah, a regular meeting on a weekly basis, a couple of hours, and sometimes, sometimes they go over two hours because we were in the middle of the project and someone was talking about how they were progressing or what new idea they had incorporated. To me, it was fascinating. And of course, for me, it was getting ideas as to how to market. That's been uppermost in my in my learning with autonomy, because as I mentioned in that video, I haven't had much practice in selling my programs because it was all word of mouth for most of my career, it's just referrals. And so now wanting to deliver or wanting to present my work in a way that people will understand and want to participate, that is the language that I'm developing. And that is what we practice with the mastermind groups. So awesome. Yeah, Thank you. Great. Great experience. Any other questions for Renee from you graduates? <laughs> Or anyone, for that matter. I'm just curious to find out if there were any particular lectures that you found to be the most beneficial for you in, as personal development or in your communications capacities or anything like that. Well, there were, oh my gosh. Um, I can't remember the one precisely. Um but it was towards the end of the course and it was essentially having to do with salesmanship and uh, again that's something i've had difficulty with and sometimes it seemed like a hard sell you know from what i was listening you know to some of the presenters and i i know myself i can't go there i'm not hard sell I, I will never be able to do that. Consequently, the mastery I want to develop is 
just more subtle. I, I want to be able to offer something that pe that everyone wants. And I feel like, okay, personal freedom, personal expression, uh, something that is unique to, to me. I, I mean, for myself, it's never been about numbers. It's never been about making the money or getting uh, and a certain number of uh, participants in my seminar. It's really about the quality of, uh, of the person or the people who want to participate in my work. That's what I appreciate. And like right now, um, yes, I'm working with one man, extraordinary man from autonomy who heard he went to the course, the Ultimate Love Affair, and wanted to do in-depth work. And I'm so grateful because he is extraordinary. And the growth has been pretty amazing. So again, I just want to be able to say what I say or speak what I offer and have people get it, you know, understand that it's not for everyone, but it is for people who want to achieve their highest potential. And that would mean connecting to the sacred within that's been my mission. That's been my goal. This is what Leah heard me speak. And I know that's why she and I connected. And she has been so incredible with her offerings to me. Because she knows that I hold that, not just for myself, but for everyone who works with me. It's making that connection to the higher self. That's the only relationship that matters and consequently once you have that connection a lot of things fall into place and that's the gift so the hard sell was the was probably a hard uh what was it a presentation for me to to digest so you know on that on that note can uh before autonomy, how when you heard the the term cells, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you had a particular <laughs> uh, definition or maybe feeling towards that. Mm -hmm. Now, how us? Uh, I, I, at least for me, and I, I want to ask you about this. Uh, now, going through autonomy, uh, uh, describe that cells. Um, how Richard teaches cells, like how how did how did it differ from the definition you had prior to autonomy? Well, I don't know that it has changed that much. Um, you see, I've never, I've never been pushy about my work. I just figure that those who understand the my offers, understand what I'm about or what I'm wanting them to strive for, I don't have to sell that. I don't have to sell that. You see, there's an understanding. People want that. And if I can offer a tool or tools to have them achieve that, they want to they want to work with me. That's it. So right. they, they see the value in exactly. what you're offering. They see the value, they hear the value, and that's it. They sign up. I'm wanting. And and that's like I say, it's still a, a challenge for me because being able to have the language, to refine the language so that I can say it, so that more people understand what I'm what I'm offering. You see, th that's what I'm still working with. It's uh, being able to offer without a push without force, without anything. It just, this is what I do. I'm available. Please join me if it sounds of interest to you. That's my approach. It always has been. It always has been. It's never been about the numbers because I have this connection where I've been taken care of. Right. Yeah, as it should be, it, it shouldn't, um... 
you should never feel like you, uh, something's being forced on you, right? It's oh, that you have yeah. to produce. You see, right, right. That uh, my body recoils. You see, I, I can't. I just can't go there. I I can't be working with. I am an accountant. <laughs> that was my first profession. That was enough of numbers, and now it's just okay. It'll flow. It'll flow. So, uh, Renee. Um... You've been through autonomy one season. Um, do you see yourself coming back for another season uh, to pick up uh, additional uh, skills? What, what are you what what like what are you working yeah. on? That that is my my goal. That is my my plan to stay with autonomy in you know one way or another to continue to yes of course I love the lectures and I want to be able to present my work and get to know more people. Uh, this is probably the the family that uh, I don't have anywhere else. It's right here, autonomy and uh, people in autonomy, because I have no family anywhere. So, of course, I am somehow always wanting to be connected. And hopefully I can get to the court test uh, next year or this, yeah, 2025. And uh, yeah, still participate. They say one way or another. Awesome. So, can you um also describe a little bit? So, you mentioned the the activities that you took part in 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 your season. Um, my question to you is, can you talk about the abundance of other activities also available in autonomy, like student projects, people that things that people are working on that are just constantly available to to the you know community right oh my gosh they're, they're endless they're boundless i mean there's always so much that people offer i mean my gosh there's so uh, many appealing businesses that it's like oh i want to know about that right introduce me please because i'd like to see uh you know who's involved with this or how can i participate so that offering is there and i know that there are some principles, you know, like na natural law. And of course, I love that whole foundation. And I've listened to a lot of uh, the podcasts and what people have to say about natural law. And then there's, um, and then of course, some of the offerings within the forum, I mean, the actual structure, uh, the John Taylor Gatto, the and then there was something else that I started to watch. I haven't completed it, but there's several parts and it, it's beautiful education. And so, yeah, to not participate, I would sense a loss. So I do want to continue because I know there's a lot of uh, offerings that I have not been able to take advantage of because I've been so involved with my business and with the, the webinar, the, the prospect, the seminar. Awesome. Um, I gotta tell you, when we met Renee, we were all, we, when we met you, we were all so blown away and we were, we were just, we couldn't stop talking about you. And when we were like, where's Renee? Like we literally, Richard and I had to schedule a meeting with Renee and go, Renee, right? <laughs> you, we have like, we see, a, we have a vision for you. We share your vision, right? We, we can solve some problems. So let's do it, right? And it was just great. And, um, you know, I want to just mention, thank you for everything you said about the Pro Media course. Um, we teach people skills, we, we teach them how to create a course, how to work in Kajabi. We teach them workflow, a lot of different tips and tricks. We take an idea and we turn that into a product. And that's the expertise within pro media. Mm -hmm. And anybody at any level can join. A beginner can join. There's so many new tools you can learn. Mm -hmm. uh, an expert can join because uh, you know, we're experts at taking products for public speakers, which is my background. I've been doing that for 10 years. I did it for Mark Passio. I did it for Dr. Andrew Kaufman. I've done it for Richard Grove. And we turn ideas into products, platforms, and messaging. So, and Renee, like your work, 
what you put out, I, I, it resonated so deeply with me. I would do anything to support you and get your work out. And that's my mission. And I appreciate you so much. And thank you for who you are and what you do. Well, Leah, likewise here, because it's so heartfelt, you know, the gratitude I feel for your contributions and everything that you supported me with so far. And I know you will continue. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, it's it, it's a lifetime membership. And I got to tell you, the, this is my family also. So to have you as a, a family yeah, member, is just, it, it makes, it puts the meaning into my life. Bless you. Bless you. Because I feel the same. It's like, where would I go? <laughs> now that I've found a family, I'm not going to be abandoned and I'm not going to abandon yet. So <laughs> I'm here. And, and that's another great point that I think Leah brought up was um, like the different skill levels. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have successful individuals, uh, you know, authors, business entrepreneurs, etc., and then uh, you have someone like myself that came in kind of with very minimal skills, but yet it's all available for you to learn. Like it's it's really up to you, like what you want to do with things. And and that's that that's yeah. so empowering. And, and uh, at least it's been for me over the past year. Exactly, because I've seen a couple of people, you know, who had no clue when they when they joined, when they entered. And now it's like, oh, well, look at that. How about that? <laughs> Extraordinary. So there's so much and the skills that we do learn that are available. Um, it's it just, um, it, you know, you say, where else would you go to, mm -hmm. to get the whole ball of wax? <laughs> That's what I have yes. to call it, swallow wax. I like that. Hey, Carlos brought up the the um, the lifetime enrollment aspect of everything coming back for another season. What has that lifetime enrollment done for you, if anything, to like, has it done anything to like um, eliminate any anxiety of, of uh, oh, I got to get this done now, 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 or has it? I mean, in your own words, like, what is that idea of the or the fact of the lifetime enrollment? What has it done for you? Well, it's it's definitely uh, set my mind at, at ease about a lot of things. It's like there's it's like th there's a pressure in my mind. There's always been it's like okay, it's a one woman show, and uh, pr uh, you know, create something, produce something. Maybe the idea of time running out. <laughs> You know, you've lived a long time. You've got 40 years under your belt here. You've been blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, enough already. I'm here. I am contributing. There's still evolutionary process going on. So just be quiet and be present. There is no rush. It is a life long journey and I know that on a heart level it's like okay we don't stop we just go on and it will be an on, ongoing unfolding journey the way it's meant to be so no pressure no <laughs> yeah it does put the mind at ease yeah for sure is there is there anything in like specific about um, post graduation that you're excited about? Well, the idea of now being able to offer uh, what I offer freely because you know up to the point of graduation, well, I wasn't able to charge or fee, and I didn't want to because I wanted people to become familiar with me and my work. And then when people started stepping up and wanting to do some additional work on one-on-one -on -one basis, well, now I can feel, okay, let's, um, donation was fine. Uh, you know, the, the fees that I charged, well, they're there. And I have a sliding scale. That's the way I've always functioned. If you can afford to pay me, fine. If you need help and you can't, that's fine. I'll still work with you. It, it just, in your determination, your sincerity to participate or to, or to 
share with me what is going on with my person or with the person because I never turn anyone away. That's, that's my, that's always been my mission. All right, Renee. Um, so let's see, uh, any other thoughts, anything that maybe I didn't ask that you would like to share with uh, prospective students? Oh, people, you mean on the outside wanting to come in or thinking about yeah. considering? Okay, well, oh, here's, here's one that was in back of my mind when I spoke to Richard or, yeah, before I spoke to Richard and Leah, uh, the idea of a, of a cult. Because, again, um, during my, my journey, I have participated in many, many study groups, shall we call them, or, yeah, whatever, from S to Landmark to Spring, or whatever that was, and of other, other groups, and I never stayed for long, because there was, a, it always seemed that it would turn into a cult-like belief, uh, a pressure where People are expected to perform in a certain way and be, uh, let's say, obedient to a particular philosophy or guru or whatever. And that's never been my thing. I, I shied away from it and consequently I never lasted very long with any kind of organization. So the idea of a cult, uh, you know, I wanted to explore is that dynamic of you know here and um i well i i got it in my mind i i clarified it with my conversations that no that is not the agenda here it is really about an empowerment of each individual and it is about teaching skills so that each person can be uh empowered so the dynamic of the of the guru, you know, of paying abeyance, abeyance or that, if I pronounce that word, to a, a leader that uh, no, no, we have we have our lecturer, we have our organizer Richard, and uh, you know, brilliant work and so on and so forth, and I don't sense that agenda. I believe he's here facilitating for all, for every member. So the that idea did lead me because I don't sense that with any uh, with any participant. How, all, how, did you, how did you find your accessibility to Richard? Um, good. Uh, you know, I mean, email appointment. Uh, and so forth. And yes, yeah, so the, the Q and A, so he was always there. I mean, that was extraordinary to be able to have a, uh, an exchange with him. So that was, uh, yeah, that, that was a necessary component for me. You see, I wanted to be able to unmute and have a conversation with the presenter. And that definitely has been a, um, Something I'm grateful for. Um, I, I, you know, something just came into my mind in regards to the course, uh, and I know part of the the course is, and and nothing is like, you have to do anything, right? But uh, one of the things is uh, these integration exercises mm -hmm. uh, throughout the course. Did you participate in that? Um, oh yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about your experience with those? Well, that's how it all started. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it all started, that I came in on a Sunday, and I guess it was sort of like what we're doing now with some newcomers, and I was the brand newcomer. I, I had just gotten an email uh, that morning saying uh, an invitation to University of Reason, and so I thought, well, what the heck? That sounds like something I want to know or participate in. I tuned in. And sure enough, right away, I, I unmuted myself and I started to speak. 
And then we had one of those gatherings, you know, where people went off into separate rooms and I was in a particular group. And then afterwards, a couple of the women um, cont uh, contacted me and we had a conversation and they were just lovely, extraordinary, beautiful women. And I thought, wow, how how wonderful. And then a couple invited me to do integration exercises, of, you know, a couple of men also. So there was this uh, getting acquainted dynamic that I really enjoyed because I didn't know anybody. I was brand new, yet there were these people who had a common bond that were in this organization and okay, and now I'm being allowed, I'm being, they're open to me. You see, it wasn't just a matter of being allowed. They were actually open to what I had to say or had to offer. And I love that. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, I'm here. I have an opportunity to speak. So the integration exercises, I think that was part of the seduction, if you want to call it a seduction, because it, definitely drew me in it's like oh my gosh how adorable I, I met uh you know Ashley and this Katie and uh you know uh, several people and I thought how adorable because I could you know on zoom you could see how darling these people were and I thought oh I want to be there <laughs> so by the time I I talked to Richard and Leah it was like okay I think I'm in yeah, and uh, like for me, the, the inter integration exercises were like a practice in communicating. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, how to how to talk to someone, how to have a conversation with someone. You know, very simple things. And obviously, the integration integration exercises change as as the course uh, moves forward. But yeah, I, I just found those so valuable. I mean, I still go back mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, no, I thought it's like, oh, this is just too adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, the, the exchange is in the, on Zoom and you can really see the people and it's like, oh, how it was just gratifying to me to make the connection with people who had no clues to who I was. And yet they were open to what I had to say. So so I, I also want to just take this opportunity to um ask uh, anyone there if they have any additional questions regarding the course, the curriculum, the uh, what's covered, uh, et cetera. I want to make sure that um, your questions get answered. Well, I just want to know, is it safe to say that anybody who comes in will be able to get to do integration exercises with Renee on the next round? Yes. Because <laughs> that's, that's a delight All right. that I like people to know about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we all come back for this. We all do. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is exactly. it's going to be my fourth fourth season, season twelve. So I've, oh, I've been coming back every season. Yeah, okay. that's how much uh, value I found. And well, I'm still I'm still learning, but yeah, yeah, every time I come back, it's something else to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, it's meeting new people and meeting or seeing where they're coming from, and it's just so expansive. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because, like, it's definitely a journey, I would say. At least for me, it's been, um, like, my first season around, it was, like, me trying to put all the pieces together of, like, the puzzle. Okay, what is this? What, where's marketing? Where does marketing fit into this? Where does, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, graphic design fit into this, et cetera? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the, the second season... I was able to learn something else. And this last season, I learned more about team building, like how to create a team around me. And, and so it's subtle, gradual, but, and I, I Richard says this, uh, it's like uh, when you go up a mountain, it's like uh, the further you go up the mountain, the your perspective just becomes so much more wider. And I, I, I would say that's, that's how it, the seasons have been for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, extraordinary changes really do occur. And I believe that a lot of it are, is subtle. You know, it, it's happening in the subconscious because you learn to be well, in collaboration. 
you learn that there's, yeah, people who have their issues, their stuff going on, and how can we work together? Yeah, I'm admirable. Oh, and I want to say this. I do want to say this because it's really been a joy for me. I having uh, worked for so many years with different people, and to find, and I'm not bypassing the women, but I do want to acknowledge the males, the quality of the males in this group. It's extraordinary. It really is. It's just outstanding to find so many men who have values, who have um, self-respect and dignity and all the qualities that we're all supposed to have. But yet in our world, I'm sorry to say, so many men lack. And I've worked with a great number. Uh, yeah, I have had an extraordinarily large number of male clients, and and I used to do workshops for men only. And so here again, I'm finding in autonomy an extraordinary quality. I mean, really, I it's like I've got to acknowledge you, all of you, because the ones that I have spoken to really have touched my heart. You are quality and you're exceptional. Like, gosh, I want to get a hold of you and say, don't settle. You, yeah, it's like, wow, you're <laughs> exceptional. And uh, I'm grateful to, to know so many. Now, it's like in one place. It's like, geez. <laughs> what, what a brilliant observation. And I, yeah. the bar is set for men after you meet the men in autonomy, believe me, the bar is up there. So, uh, yes, absolutely. It, it's totally, I'm totally there because, um, yeah, it's been my uh, my pleasure and my joy to be to to know so many, to have met so many who are just quality men. Who any woman would be proud to have as a partner, to have as a, a, a father, child, whatever. You know, it's just the male energy is, um, yeah, awesome. So, and no, I'm sorry, Carlos, people can't just buy autonomy. Mm -hmm. They have to go through a screening and interview process because this community is so protected mm -hmm. for that reason. And right now, we have a team of graduates who are doing those interviews for us. It's the Blueprint for Success call. And I do believe there are a few of the graduates who are doing those calls in here now. Um, so um, if anybody wants to say hello, uh, you can get a, a sense of who you may be speaking to. But, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a curated community for a mm -hmm. very good reason. Mm -hmm. It really is. And I'm so... Pleased, I, really, it's a thrill for me because of the work I do. It's I I couldn't go past it. I could not ignore it. The quality of the men is outstanding, and I'm just so proud to be a part of the community and honor all of you who have taken in the the philosophy who have made that as part of your being, which is really what is required. And yet, bear in mind what I said about participating in other groups where I know a lot of the men especially learn the, the lingo, learn the words, learn the whatever, and then they use it, they use it. I, what I have found with autonomy is that the men become who they say that they are and who they're wanting to become. That's and perfect. that is a rare gift. Yeah, and I want to acknowledge that within autonomy yeah. is that room for growth. Mm -hmm. That's what is fostered, the space mm -hmm. to grow into those different uh, facets of, of uh, being that wholesome human being. And yeah it's that's what everyone is here for everybody's working on their own thing they're 
everybody here is trying to do something with their life and being supportive and giving each other the support and the space to be able to make the errors that you need to make to have growth mm -hmm. and becoming, like you said, becoming. Becoming. Always yes. becoming. Yeah, because that's really the essence of it. It's who you become in the process of the life you navigate, you create and navigate. And that is, um, again, commendable. So on that note, um, R Renee, we, we did uh, put a link uh, for the Blueprint call, but R Renee, can you tell us about your uh, experience going through the Blueprint call? How was that for you? For those of who have not done that yet? Okay. It was it, it was okay, but I wasn't so... I, you know, I... I it, um, it, you know, it was a pleasant conversation. It was good. But it was not the, you know, what swung me into. No, no, as a matter of fact, at that point, I had every, it was like, no, I'm not going to participate. It was that clear. It wasn't until um, the an integration request came from, I, I believe it was, I, I know it was Ashley. And, and uh, that's what turned things around. But the blueprint call, no, it didn't go anywhere for me in my in my mindset. No. So what what was it? What was it? Uh, what what didn't do it for you at that blueprint call? That did it for you at that in, uh, integration exercise. Probably the warmth, the warmth, and the heartfelt connection that I felt in those integration calls, you see mm. Katie and then um, with Ashley, that, and then it, I, I'm sorry to say, I can't remember. I know there was an integration call. Was it Mike? I think it might've been Mike. Yeah, Mike, yeah, he, he was, yeah, it was, um, there was a connection. There was a connection that was warmth and that's what it's like, okay, now, I'm willing to listen more. I, I, yeah, the the book call with uh, Richard and Leah. <laughs> so, you know, like the blueprint was just an introduction, but um, I wasn't there. Awesome. Yeah, well, for for my my blueprint call, I got some really good uh, resources because um, I I still remember I actually have the book over there. It's because uh, I had some 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 uh, my obstacle was finances so I got some really good resources uh, in regards to that and eventually I ended up uh, gaining some really good skills in regard through something else that's offered in autonomy like the wealth battle um, mm -hmm. the wealth battle.com thing but so it was yeah my blueprint call was ex like very very uh, uh, productive and mm -hmm. like I, I knew I needed to get in but that was my obstacle was a, the uh -huh. finances but um, any other obstacles that people might be going through right now? Any prospective uh, people looking into joining autonomy? You directed that to the audience, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or any other questions for Renee? I've got one. Hi, Mike. Hello. Hi, Michael. Hello. The question I've got is, uh, what did you find most challenging about the whole experience? What really, uh, what, uh, what may have been scary or what really kind of challenged you? The idea of the AI, or the cyber, <laughs> everything that, you know, putting the the pro media that was probably the most challenging because I know I, I've always had a sense my lim my limitation with the computer the cyber everything um, yeah and it takes me a long time what you can probably do in five minutes it would take me quite a while to decipher and 
wrap my 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 brain around it. So that was probably the like, oh, do I really want to do that? And then I could see Leah uh, maneuver, and it was wow. Okay, well maybe I don't want to. You know, I still don't really think I want to develop the skill, but yet she's so adept that it's oh okay. Well maybe. Maybe in time. <laughs> Maybe in time. There was a consideration. So it sounds to me like that challenge was kind of uh, diminished, not necessarily because you took that challenge on, but that you just had access to the resources that solved that problem. Precisely. Precisely. So it eased in my mind. The monster wasn't such a monster. He became like a, ugh, <laughs> just kind of a, an appealing ur urchin. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And uh, we, we do have uh, some upcoming events. Oh, no, this one... Uh, so just to kind of give you guys a heads up uh, for next week, we're going to have uh, uh, Richard uh, be as a guest that's going to be doing the quest. So hopefully you guys can join us uh, next week as well. Um, and Wait, next, uh, next week, Richard's the guest on quest. That's the message that I just received. Get out of here. All right. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was. It, yeah, that was sent by, by Le uh, Leah. So. All right. Usually well, we, so. <laughs> <laughs> we do the AMA, right? But we don't do that till September. And we thought that how can we let people talk to Richard? Why don't we have him as the guest on Autonomy Quest? And then people can speak to him sooner and start to overcome their obstacles or ask the questions they need to ask him. And we'll still do the AMA, ask me anything in September. But this will be a great opportunity for people who are ready to, you know, even though it's summer, they're ready to get in because their specials running now, right? And and go to the Blueprint for Success call to find out about, out about the specials. But you're one of you definitely want to catch one of those. Um, and so Richard being the guest now, yeah, it's amazing. I think that's a great idea because I would have loved that. You see, and I, and actually. I did have that opportunity. And that's when I said, you know, that invitation in my email, University of Reason, and I came in and I was able to unmute and ask him questions. That was the AMA. I realized that when you I were guess. saying it, because the, the breakout rooms in the AMA, I, that thank ah, you for okay. enlightening me. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, because then that, that's when I really was getting enthused. It was like, okay, yeah, doable. And uh, we have a hand up, uh, uh, JP, how are you? Glad I'm doing great, you. thank you. Um, hi, I'm doing well. Uh, I just want to say a special thank you both to you, Carlos, and to you, Renee, for your brilliant presentation. And I wanted to congratulate you and officially announce that you two are jointly the second recipient of the Monero tipping jar project. And Carlos, I've already sent your tip and Renee, I have yours queued up as soon as I get your address. So congratulations, I'll be putting a vlog out with the details of every to everyone of your public addresses so that you can start receiving tips on the tipping jar. So that'll be up very soon. All right, well, I, I'll take tips, but I just can't take them a Monero just yet. <laughs> I... Well, as a matter of fact, Renee, you have the distinction of having the most number of outstanding Monero tips headed your way as soon as your wallet set <laughs> oh, up. Well, I guess I so you, get have, it. you have 0 0.0101 as your initial test transaction. You have <laughs> 0 0.111 as an acknowledgement of your coursework. You have um, one of... 0 0.0111 for having provided a question for one of my vlogs. And for, for today, you have one of 
0.0123, which is what I sent Carlos, for a total of 0.145 Monero, which I'm holding on your behalf. Well, thank you so much. I will hold you to that. And gosh, I am I am incredibly wealthy. I am wealthier than <laughs> I realized. <laughs> well, I, I want to thank uh, JP, uh, Mr. Monero, I, I, uh, because he's 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 just I met him in Acapulco, I think, in March of 2023. Right. And um, I mean, he's just such an amazing person. But uh, he's been helping a lot of a lo lot of individuals that that are practicing their skills in autonomy with their tipping jar and things like that. So so thank you, uh, JP, for that. You're welcome. And congratulations on being the two newest inductees in the Tipping Jar Project. <laughs> Thank you so much. I look forward to collecting. <laughs> Thanks, James. So th this is the, the VIP for, uh, Summit 4. Um, so this, on... Yeah, this is September. Well, yeah. yeah. On Saturday, September 7th yeah. at 12 p.m. Eastern uh, will be That's the correct. VIP Summit number four. Say no to the NWO, the New World Order. This will be uh, an event like no other. Okay, It's a panel of public speakers uh, as they share their tools and philosophies, bringing the NWO agendas into the light and providing solutions to deal with them. Speakers include Mark Passio, John Bush, Richard Grove, Jay Dyer, Charlie Robinson, Scott Armstrong, um, I might be incorrect in saying, but there might even be an addition to that roster, or that could just yeah. Be scroll up a little. There's a full there's a full list. We're getting their headshots as we speak. Okay, uh, I'm also seeing Matthew Raymer, Ekaros, Icar uh, Justin Armand, Peter Duke, yes, James Corbett. Okay. Excellent, excellent lineup of speakers for Saturday, September seventh. So with just a little under a month away, there's plenty of time to register. You register for free at universityofreason.com forward slash autonomy dash VIP dash summit dash four. Beautiful. And uh, we just, just for the sake of thoroughness, um, by the end, there will be a link in the chat for that. Um, but before that, you can, in the next month before NWO, VIP Summit 4, we're going to drop in the chat right now for all of you guys that are here tonight, a couple of free gifts for y'all. And that includes the first three mindsets and the download of the 19 essential skills for success. So those are in the chat right now. And as I previously just mentioned, we will also make sure that the link for VIP Summit 4 is also now in the chat. So um, I hope everybody gets a chance to enjoy everything that has uh, that you guys get from being here tonight. Thanks, James. And uh, yeah, the, the two free assets that uh, James is putting up there, um, are extremely valuable. I mean, I, I remember when I got my hands on those. Um, oh, and uh, the 19 essential skills, right, James? You're going to you're gonna add those? Yep. We got all the links for yeah. all of that great stuff right there in the chat as we speak. Yeah, I started using the 19 essential skills immediately, even before joining Autonomy. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I got my first client that way. So th thanks, Richard, for that. My, my past self thanks you for that. Um, all right. So with that said, we have uh, 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 some um, about 30 minutes left. Uh, any other questions for Renee um, regarding autonomy, the course? Oh, excuse me, Carlos. We're scheduled to, to go to 830. So I think we're just oh. there. So if you want to wrap it up, I think you, did, you guys did a great job. Well, thank you. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, let's, I'll play it by ear. It's up to... To you guys, if you guys have questions, we can keep it going. No, we should wrap it up. It's a little bit of a start on time, end on time type of thing. A little, you know, a little integrity there, I think. 
Okay. Um, just uh, just a final a final call for anybody interested in the in the in the uh, the complimentary gifts that you get for being here tonight. And um, and if anyone's in the middle, of, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to cut anybody off from getting those. So if there's anybody in the middle of doing that right now, we can hang on the line and make sure that you get that uh, all squared away for yourself. Oh, these links can also be found in the product where you signed up. Just go back where the recordings are and you can access all these links. Well, I did not know that. That's great. Thank you, Leah. Well, excellent. You guys, everybody, thank you for being here tonight on the uh, first edition of this year's Autonomy Quest. And um, next week will be Richard Grove himself as the guest on Quest. So hope to see you guys then. Oh, and can I just say one thing in closing? Sure. Because, you know, you've asked me some wonderful questions, Carlos. And one of the things that I, you know, again, the opportunities to bring your dreams forward, to create, well, here I'm having an opportunity to bring one of my dreams into realization. And that is the Autonomy Club for Creative Expression, mm -hmm. which will culminate in a showcase, a performance on December 14th. We're going to be having our first meeting on September the 4th. It is a Wednesday at, it will be 7 p.m. Pacific. Oh no, what is it? It's a 4 p.m. Pacific. Leah, help seven, me out. 7 p.m. Eastern time. Seven okay, Eastern time. That's what it is. Okay. And we are going to be um shining our light you know it's finding what is the creative expression with each person it's not about uh being professional of course professionals are welcome but is anyone with a dream of performing whether it's performance arts visual arts uh reading a passage from a book or your own poem anything that people want to express. We will uh, be meeting and it will be about a two and a half minute showtime presentation, right, in December. But in the meantime, we get to prepare, we get to explore ideas as to how to present, what to present. And anyway, everyone is invited. And I, again, autonomy offering this opportunity to me to bring into realization one of the things that I've done in the past and that is really a lot of fun not just for me but for everyone participating because we get to explore ideas talents skills gifts anything so thank you for that you know, that's really exciting and it's genius. And I can't believe we have an, a performance arts club slash arts club now. And it just um, is another opportunity for people to realize this is an incubator where you can bring your ideas, you can run your projects, you can run your own events and you have the support and you have the uh, the guidance to be able to learn how to do, the, do those things. So it's brilliant and I'm so excited. I am thrilled. I am thrilled. I can't hardly wait. So September the 4th, it's a Wednesday and the announcements will be made and reminders that, yeah, no, you don't have to be a professional actor, actress. Now, the thing is that there's something in your heart that you want to contribute to the world. Amazing. Thank you, Renee. And I just want to say thank you for everyone who showed up today. Um, hopefully you guys got some value uh, out of this and I hope to see you guys next week. Uh, uh, James, thank you, thank you so much for for backing me up. Leah, you're amazing, uh, and uh, everyone else, uh, have a excellent rest of your evening. All of you, thank you so much for being here. All right, guys, see you guys next week. Bye. Uh, thank you so much, Carlos. Really appreciate all your questions. I'll see you again, and hope to talk to you some more. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye, Leah. <laughs>